So when we go out there, you'll see they're, they're very evenly spaced. They're almost all the same diameter. They're the same species. The canopy layer is all the same height. It's very, it looks very much like a plantation. That's Jeremy Getz. He's the forester for the Nulhegan Basin Division of the Silvio Conti National Wildlife Refuge in Vermont. And he's talking about trees. Now, not just any trees, but the trees that we are about to see when I visited the refuge forest in early May. Uniformly planted balsam fir growing roughly around the same height and width in the ruts created by old logging machines. In places, as Jeremy observed, it can look more like a farm than a forest. And that's because it once was. In the 1800s, this low-lying forest land in the far north corner of Vermont was a logging hotspot. Lumberjacks would spend freezing winters here cutting down trees by day and sleeping in piles on the floor of chilly cabins at night. Come spring, the toughest of the bunch would float the logs down the Connecticut River and ride on top of them. That was the fastest way to move the lumber from Vermont to the trading hubs in Massachusetts. But while the stories of those days are amusing and fun, the legacy that they've left the forests of today is far more serious. Decades of logging for one key species created the uniform balsam fir forest that dominates much of the Nulhegan today. That uniformity makes the ecosystem vulnerable to the variability of climate change, whereas a diverse forest is full of species that each responds differently to the changes in temperature, precipitation, diseases, and pests. So now, managers are reconciling the harms of the past while also preparing the forest to be more resilient to the harms of the future. And so what we're trying to do is diversify to bring in species that were previously here that aren't here now, but we know that they're more resilient to a drier, warmer climate. Steve Aegis is the refuge manager at the Nulhegan, and he's working with Jeremy Getz to oversee the refuge side of such a project. Specifically, what we've been looking at with this project is how we can work to restore the Nulhegan Basin, which has been heavily logged for over 150 years, with an eye towards managing for biodiversity, but also understanding that climate change is going to impact this habitat. The project aims to increase diversity in the forest so that it's no longer just middle-aged balsam fir after middle-aged balsam fir for acres. This should benefit wildlife conservation and climate change adaptation. So to do that, they cut down a lot of trees and are planting a whole lot of new ones. So we're going back in and what's called a enrichment planting and bringing seedlings in and that's what we've been working on for the better part of the month of April and now into May we'll be planting about 14,000 seedlings, cedar, hemlock, red spruce, and white pine. Grace Smith, a technician at UVM, is leading up that effort. Tree planting, you want to get as close to the flag as you can. So you stick the dibble in the ground and really as far as you can go. Open up a little pocket by shaking it back and forth. Once you got that, you'll take your seedling. Um, for some of them, like for this one, like this is a crazy long root. Um, we are trimming them just because it's better for the roots to be facing all the way down. And once it's all situated, you'll take your dibble about four inches or so out. You make a second dibble hole to close the roots in and then fold it forward mm -hmm. and then the last step is that you check to make sure that the roots are covered and they are and they look happy and then you put the flag right next to the tree so we can find it and that's true and that's his new home yeah and then hopefully it will grow up into a big beautiful pine Grace wielded a clipboard with a grid of multicolored squares that meticulously map out where each species of seedling will go the team needs this careful planning because it's not just a restoration project for the Nulhegan, it's also a research project for the whole country. The results from this adaptive planting can hold lessons for other spruce fir forests expected to get warmer and drier with a changing climate. Tony Diamato is the head of forestry at UVM and is the lead researcher. Really what we do is come up with a design that both meets our science interests, but also really is a partnership with the management interests and the long-term goals for the site. And then we measure the heck out of it and, and replicate it and all the things that are probably a nuisance to the staff in terms of what scientists want, but really allow us to then get robust information that um, we can track and inform over time about what might be you know, ideal strategies for this landscape going into the future. So they have 550 acres for the experiment and three different types of treatments. The first is a simple control, 
The next is a density thinning, which means cutting down trees and leaving gaps. And the third is thinning and then planting of native trees that are well suited to the expected climate conditions. Wherever they cut down trees, harvesters left branches and logs to add even further structural diversity to the forest. So what we're trying to do is replicate some of these, some of these attributes that are found more often in more mature forests. Really, the key was to try to enhance the structural diversity and, and compositional complexity of those those forests by um, creating gaps and getting multiple age classes. So one of the treatments, the 15-acre unit, um, has three three-acre uh, what we call patch clear cuts. So it's kind of a three three-acre openings with a lot of retained trees within them, and the goal being that those trees are retained, mature trees. Um, create basically what you would see following a, like a downburst with wind, so kind of emulating that type of disturbance. So after the plantings are in the ground, the monitoring will begin, and researchers will track how priority wildlife respond to these habitat changes, and how the newly planted trees in the forest itself will take to them. So the name of the game is structural complexity, and that's going to benefit biodiversity. So what we're trying to do is pull out some of the balsam fir, recognizing it's a short-lived species, and preferentially treat for red spruce. Red spruce is a longer-lived species. So with an eye towards climate change and understanding that we need to do what we can to capture carbon, we're trying to focus on longer-lived species and transition some of the refuge, but not all of it, to a late successional forest. So we're managing for early successional mid-successional and late successional. And really the goal is not to kind of re-engineer the Mulligan's forest. But really the goal, to, to Jeremy's point and Steve's point, kind of, we're, we're just adding in some additional um, opportunities for adaptation over time. As a changing climate forces land managers to reevaluate what it means to really protect habitat and wildlife resources, two main and seemingly opposing approaches to land management have emerged. There's cut and dry restoration, of returning a landscape back to historic conditions. And then there's adaptive management, which helps a landscape become more resilient to preserve resources for the future changing climate. This project draws on both. It restores the forest to an ecosystem of the past in order to make it more resilient for the future of climate change. Simply by introducing a more diverse range of species, age groups, and wood fibers, a better balance will fall into place. This landscape is actually a legacy of only caring about one objective, which was fiber. <laughs> so we learned a long time ago in forestry, like that's not a good scenario. We want to balance. And it's a pretty fitting philosophy to have guiding this work, which at its heart is about balance and cooperation between the Fish and Wildlife Service, UVM, and the busy team of planters on the ground. Everyone has their specialty, everyone has their niche, and in this diverse arrangement, the forest will thrive. For Climate Close-Ups, I'm Olivia Giger.